Welcome back to the program and remember we are discussing the topic of enterprise growth. Uh, Dr. Mashimo, before we went for a break, uh, you were discussing something, you mentioned something on uh, critical skills to be embraced by entrepreneurs during uh, enterprise growth. Huh? How critical, which are these critical uh, issues and how critical are they to any growth of an enterprise? Yes, an entrepreneur will require critical skills. But what we mean by critical is that uh, these skills are essential actually for progression within the entrepreneurial growth phase. Uh, some of the critical skills that an entrepreneur requires uh, to be able to go on could include, uh, for example, critical thinking. Critical thinking is looking at things holistically and being able to break it down and uh, isolate the various components and get the actual perspective altogether. Uh, secondly, the entrepreneur requires skills to identify opportunities and these are opportunities that can be exploited. We need to remember that even after reaching the growth phase, you need to go back and check the phase of searching for ideas so that whatever ideas that were not implemented that are vital can be implemented at this phase. Uh, thirdly, uh, the entrepreneur will require skills for gathering appropriate resources, which could include financial and non-financial resources. For example, you will require to get the right people who can help you dr to drive the enterprise in the growth stage. Okay. We also require uh, skills uh, pertaining to the organizational structure and time management. You realize that many entrepreneurs have a problem in managing time, but time is of essence uh, given the fact that without appropriate time management you realize that your competitors will go way ahead of you. Additionally, entrepreneurs need to have skills on decision making. Remember when the business is growing it's very important to really make some certain decisions which are very critical in the, in the business. Some decisions could be very hard, others could be very very obvious. But if you look at the decisions, we have the routine and non-routine. Now for the entrepreneur, the non-routine are actually very critical because it, it impacts it perhaps heavily on the, on, 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 the, on, the, on the business. So you must have that ability to really discern which decision to adopt for a specific uh, uh, maybe uh, so, so problem solving uh, strategy. Now the other issue is that the, the entrepreneur must also be very, very persuasive and must have uh, refined communication skills. Uh, the, the reason being that when you want to expand your business, you want to reach maybe some an, an, uh, uh, other markets that you've not reached maybe before. And for you to really uh, network with these people in the other markets, you need to have the ability to communicate with them. You need to have uh, ability to even write to maybe institutions which can grant you some uh, funding. You remember when we talk about the business plan, we say that uh, you need to really write a bankable business plan. And that written uh, skills, the skills to write maybe a business plan is very important. So the persuasion skills, community skills is very, very important. Now the other issue is that uh, the entrepreneur must be a leader. You must demonstrate leadership because you own the idea. You must be able to at least bring everybody on board and drive them perhaps to the logical conclusion. So generally when you talk about leadership, entrepreneurs must really prepare themselves to know how to uh, lead from the front because the business belongs to them and they must always uh, demonstrate that kind of, 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 of issue. And lastly uh, is negotiation skills. Entrepreneurs need to negotiate for their space. Yeah, the space is often crowded by many, many, many other players in the market because you don't really operate maybe in isolation. So there is a lot of competition, but what you need to do is have the right skills to negotiate for maybe a market share have the ability to even uh, try to outsmart your competitor in trying to maybe win a certain market which you are controlling. So generally the negotiation skills are very important because you use them to perhaps maybe negotiate for cheaper maybe raw materials, you negotiate for the wider market, you negotiate for finances. So basically negotiation is a very important aspect that you need to have. Uh, maybe to, for the sake of an entrepreneur who is watching the program right now, uh, for a successful enterprise growth, are there certain or specific uh, traits that must be embraced or anybody else eh, can ensure that a business prospers? Yes, Regina, you realize that uh, achieving growth is basically a balancing act for the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And not all enterprises really created do achieve growth. But this pertains to a number of factors uh, in terms of the characteristics 
that the entrepreneurs have. For example, uh, passion. An entrepreneur ought to have uh, the passion, the drive, the focus, the inner, you know, uh, drive that makes that person want to go on and really fulfill uh, the purpose for which the enterprise is created. Not many people have that passion. Secondly, uh, the entrepreneur will require tolerance for ambiguity and tenacity despite failure, such that even if you fail, you keep going, you keep persistent, you keep trying. That is the essence of uh, success of an entrepreneur in the face of growth. You will also require a product that is needed by the customer and not just you. That is important because at the end of it all, whatever we produce is for the benefit of the customers. And uh, finally, you require execution intelligence or critical skills. You have to continuously improve and acquire additional skills that can propel you in the growth phase. The skills can be acquired through networks, through mentoring, and a host of other engagements that the entrepreneur undertakes in the entrepreneurial process. And we know that n not all businesses make it to the very last stage due to one reason or another. And entrepreneurs also have to cope with so many challenges during the process of ensuring that uh, business grows to an expected level. Which are some of these challenges, Mr. Sergon? The entrepreneurial arena is full of challenges. Whether you are in the initial stage or even you are at the final stage where you want to exit from the business. But uh, when you talk about the growth stage, you can dichotomize um, challenges into two, what we call psychological challenges and non-psychological challenges. Now among the psychological challenges, these are challenges that are faced by the entrepreneur. And this is what separates a businessman from an entrepreneur. Now one of the challenges under that particular uh, category, uh, the level of stress that you face. Remember at this particular phase, your business is expanding, you are supposed to harness more resources, you are supposed to increase more labor. So there are a lot of stress. You must make several decisions in a day, which means that your capacity to really soak stress is very important at that level. So entrepreneurs may have a problem in handling that. Number two is that most entrepreneurs face a lot of discouragement from uh, uh, family, from relatives, and even from other people. And this has been a very, very serious issue when you are dealing with a growth stage because many people really don't like you succeeding. So if you are doing this and you realize people are giving you some negative energy, you, what you need to do is identify people who provide the right energy for you to do this. People can give you positive um, uh, support to, to ensure that the business is, is doing pretty well. The third one is the, the issue to do with the number of hours that you put in. It's about psychological. Number of hours that you put in. And as I alluded earlier on, you must always be ready to really spend a lot of time in the business, especially in the initial stages and the cross stages. Because the absence of you uh, not putting a lot of time is that you may fail really to grasp what the business needs at that particular point in time. So it's important that we really focus on the issue of the number of hours that you, you put in. The other challenge that an entrepreneur faces is um, experiencing low quality of life at this particular phase because he spends much of the time in the business, you'll find um, he, he stressed up and therefore he may not be able to relax. But uh, other challenges which uh, they do experience is that there is risk of uncertainty about the income that he's going to receive. Remember at that particular point we've not really said the business has matured so he's still trying to really unless maybe uh, resources based on the sales that it does and um, other issues that will also crop up is uh, the, 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 the kind of responsibility is faced with as an entrepreneur there is huge responsibility at that level he is the one who is supposed to run each and every aspect in the business it could be the finance the, 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 the accountant he will be the procurement officer he'll be doing interviews and at times with lack of experiences in perhaps maybe assessment of staff is likely to end up maybe hiring and firing because he is not able to really come up with the right person to do the job. So generally, those are some of the challenges which are falling within the psychological uh, factors which faces an entrepreneur. But of course, the non-psychological issues like um, financial matters, these are things that will be a challenge for them because the business intends to expand. Others could be expansion of the room that you want to perhaps maybe use in the business. Uh, others could be general issues like um, trying to uh, look for the right uh, um, um, 
storage for your facilities and so on and so forth. So generally, they are challenging at that stage because the business is sort of expanding in nature. Uh, Dr. Mashuma, maybe as we wind up, uh, what's your advice to entrepreneurs on how well they can uh, they can act to make the growth stage more effective? Entrepreneurs uh, can make the growth stage to be more effective if they do a number of things that uh, ought to be done at this stage. We realize that uh, at the growth stage, it is basically a balancing act. So the aspect of strategy becomes extremely important on the part of the entrepreneur. Uh, some of the notable things, for example, record keeping, record management, the entrepreneur should be able to know what is going on in the enterprise. Again, uh, uh, the connectivity with the environment is an important aspect. The entrepreneur must have a good understanding of the environment uh, so that I can be able to tap the opportunities during the growth stage. The entrepreneur will also require to enhance the critical skills plus the skills of the employees so that the employees can share the same vision uh, to drive the enterprise to the next level. Uh, finally, the entrepreneur will be required to develop appropriate entrepreneurial networks uh, and we should do that as much as possible and uh, some of the areas that uh, the entrepreneur could uh, enhance include uh, developing social networks uh, also developing uh, uh, professional networks and also managerial networks so that can be able to tap uh, benefits from a host of other entrepreneurs and actors in the field of uh, uh, entrepreneurship. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your insights on uh, enterprise growth. See you again next Wednesday, same time. I've been your host, Regina Orlando.